Hey everyone, Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, June 16th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere. Happy Father's Day, by the way. Ford has announced that it will allow all of its U.S. dealers to sell EVs, effectively scrapping its Model E certification program. This move comes after intense pressure from the independent dealership lobby. The move aims to boost their motivation to sell EVs across the country. In September of 2022, Ford's CEO Jim Farley announced their Model E program, which established that dealers who wish to continue to sell and service Ford electric vehicles after December 31st of 2023 would have to meet specific requirements. The program contained two levels, including Model E Certified and Model E Certified Elite. These programs mandated installing a specific number of EV chargers and investing in training, which Ford estimated as a minimum investment of $500,000. This would also include a specific website for no-haggle pricing. Dealers who choose to not make the investment would not receive EVs to sell. In November of 2023, the EV training financial obligations were cut by half. Ford also reduced the minimum requirement for installed EV charging stations at dealers and delayed the deadline for the installation by six months to June 30th, 2024. Ford says the elimination of requirements to enable EV sales will improve availability across the country, which will benefit customers and make increased market share possible. The larger issue at play here is the power dynamic between major automakers and the dealer groups, which have a monopoly on sales. This development proves which of the two entities has the most power. Ford's full-year gross income in 2023 was $25.6 billion worldwide, with about 2,800 dealerships in the U.S. To exemplify scale, AutoNation, one of the largest dealer groups in the country, has about 300 dealerships, which represents about 2% of nearly 17,000 dealerships in the USA. Their gross profit was $5.1 billion in 2023. IANA, a new EV charging network founded by a coalition of global automakers including BMW, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, and Stellantis has announced the establishment of its global headquarters, selecting Durham, North Carolina. The company revealed its plans to invest over $10 million in the city, creating more than 200 jobs, as well as announcing more members of their leadership team. The newly appointed executives include CFO Derek Rush, who was the former CFO at BP Pulse, CPO Ricardo Stamanti, the former SVP of Stellantis Energy, and COO Shankar Muthukumar, the former VP of Mortensen, an engineering and energy services firm. The new facility in Durham will house a customer experience lab, which will act as a central node to seven new satellite labs at each of the founding OEM's facilities and will be designed to address charging issues, enhance customer support, and ensure interoperability testing. The company plans to deploy its first DC fast chargers by the end of 2024, with a goal of over 30,000 ultra fast charging points across their network by 2030. I wonder if these seven automakers are on the same page. Recently, Mercedes, Stellantis, and General Motors have announced delays in their EVs along with relaxed EV strategies, whereas Honda, BMW, and Hyundai Group brands have committed more investments to EVs in recent months. With slow deployment of NEVI stations and competing EV charging networks, do you think the IANA network can be successful and stay on track to reach their goal of 30,000 charging points by 2030? On the topic of EV charging, a few weeks ago in episode 9 of The Current, I reported about significant personnel changes within Tesla's supercharging team. I took the unpopular stance that the move represented a refreshing of people and culture rather than a catastrophic change in direction for charging infrastructure or the automaker. This week, during the annual Tesla shareholders meeting, Elon Musk commented further on the matter. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oops, wrong clip. Uh, our supercharger network is continuing to grow. Uh, you know, rumors of the death of the supercharger are greatly exaggerated. Uh, we, we are, in fact, uh, continuing to grow the supercharger network significantly. In fact, this year, I think we'll put more, we'll deploy more superchargers this year that are actually working um, than the rest of industry combined. 
just FYI. <laughs> now, now we are going to be more careful about like, you know, the capital efficiency of where we deploy superchargers. Um, but for sure, any place that has congestion, uh, any sort of missing parts of the map that we're missing, we're going to put the superchargers there. So um, it, it, even for the remainder of the year, we, we expect to spend about half a billion dollars on, on supercharger deployment. So it's, it's very significant. And it'd be a well spent half a billion. Elon also reiterated that plans to open the network to aforementioned automakers are moving forward as an important part of strengthening the EV industry. Back in 2022, Remots published a new speed record for their Nevera electric hypercar, hitting a top speed of 258 miles per hour, claiming to be the fastest electric hypercar in the world. But they have been officially one-upped. Japanese engineering firm Aspark has announced a new speed record for their OWL SP600 electric production intent prototype hypercar. At the automotive testing Papenburg track in Germany, the SP600 achieved a top speed of 272.5 miles per hour. The vehicle production is in partnership with Manifatura Automobili Torino in Italy, and Aspark plans to sell 50 units total, which are already spoken for, with a starting price of $3.1 million. The ultimate top speed record is held by the SSC Tuatara, which achieved 316 miles per hour back in October of 2020. I'm sure we will soon see more attempts by EVs to capture the top speed record before the end of the year. Speaking of fast EVs, those with a need for speed could have a chance at racing in a new series in the U.S. The World Karting Association has announced a new category in partnership with Blue Shock Race for the 2025 American Electric Kart Championship. This series has been running for years in Europe and will hold races in the U.S. for the first time this year. This championship will feature the BSR X4 class, which includes BSR X4 electric power units delivering 27 kilowatts or 36 horsepower, a top speed of up to 78 miles per hour, and swappable batteries. There will be 32 participant spots available with a minimum age requirement of 14. The inaugural race will take place at the Daytona track in Florida in December of 2024, with two demo events scheduled in Indiana for October and November. Many kids getting involved in racing at a young age start with karting, and historically, those karts have been gas-powered. Offering electric karting for those striving to compete in all-electric racing series is a promising step forward to developing skills with electric powertrains, but also is a path forward for more affordable participation for starting off a racing career, considering the reduced cost and complexity of an electric kart. I'll link some information below if you're interested in learning more or want to enter your kids into this electric karting series. Last week, we shared a host of incredible deals in the EV space which undercut internal combustion engine competitors. This week, Honda's Prolog has earned a mention. The electric SUV can now be leased in these 15 states for as low as $369 per month for 36 months with $3,999 down. The deal expires July 8th. As a total monthly cost, this is a more affordable option than the current lease on Tesla's Model Y. The Prologue is built on GM's Ultium platform, and the sister vehicle, the Blazer EV, has a good lease price too, with a $369 monthly payment for 24 months and $1,679 down, which ends July 1st. Chevy also announced recent price drops in leasing for their smaller Equinox EV by up to $140 per month. The new lease deal starts at $379 per month for 36 months with $3,198 down. Chevy Bolt lessees are eligible for another $3,000 in discounts, bringing the lease price to $339 per month for 36 months with $3,009 down. Are these lease prices low enough to attract ICE or hybrid buyers to go electric? If not, what do you think it will take? On June 14th, there were some major changes affecting the e-bike and micromobility industries. Section 301 of tariffs on Chinese imports put in place during the previous administration were set to expire last year and have been extended several times. This week, the expiration was finalized and all e-bikes imported from China are now subject to a 25% tariff. Many of the e-bike companies have already increased their pricing and most will have no choice but to do so in the near future. For the first time, the average price of an e-bike will probably rise this year. 
some of the largest e-bike brands have enough inventory and volume to hold prices near constant, which will dramatically increase the pressure on smaller competitors. We would not be surprised to see at least 100 e-bike companies exit the U.S. market within the next year, ceding market share to the major players. We may also see some interesting mergers and acquisitions. Of course, the end goal of this policy is to encourage e-bike manufacturing to relocate to the United States. Among the most obvious benefactors of this change might be Detroit's Bloom. The company offers smaller e-bike manufacturers a path to unification and access to scale for manufacturing, distribution, and customer support. We suspect their coalition will be an attractive solution which allows many brands to flourish and compete against the four or five imported e-bike brands which presently dominate the sector. In the short term, we can expect elevated e-bike prices from most brands and steep discount going out of business sales from others. Sometimes the dangers and sacrifices of a deal outweigh the savings. Before you decide to order your next e-bike, I'd encourage you to check out my multi-part e-bike buying guide at Misco Electric Ride Reviews and watch one of our in-depth reviews on the make and model you're considering. In fact, we've just published several reviews of brand new models from Bellatrix, Electric, and Aventon already this month. Well, that's all for this week's edition of The Current. If you haven't yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you considered subscribing and sharing this video if you found some value in this coverage. We will continue making this series as we see growing viewership. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.